Hi everyone, thanks for logging on for this training on Seek and I Naturalist, which are two awesome mobile apps that will get you excited to get outdoors, explore, and learn about what's growing and living around you. This is the first part of a series of tutorials that will introduce you to the two apps that explains what they are, how to get them all set up and on your phone, and get you outdoors and exploring. My name is Brent Boscarino, and I'm the Invasive Species Citizen Science Coordinator with the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference, which is the host organization for the Lower Hudson Partnership for Regional Invasive Species Management, or PRISM for short. This presentation was made possible through funds from the Environmental Protection Fund, which is administered by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. I'm excited to do this tutorial and training workshop with you guys and get you excited about using these two apps and getting outdoors and exploring and learning about the plants, animals, and fungi around you. As a former teacher in a K through 12 setting and also a dad of two younger kids, I have always just marveled at how kids interact with nature. When they're outdoors, they're exploring, they're asking questions, they get excited about things, whether it's hunting for frogs or catching bugs or looking at a flower and just looking at it in such detail and just asking questions, I think it's awesome. And reinvigorating that sense of awe and curiosity about the natural world with the adult volunteers that I now work with is my, now my job. We all have it in us, that sense of curiosity to want to explore and ask questions. And it's all about rekindling that sense of wonder. Think back to when you were a kid and exploring and rekindling that sort of energy of wanting to learn more, getting outdoors, exploring, figuring out what's around you. Human beings are curious by nature. So it's really about tapping into that and wanting to um, interact with nature in a different way, asking questions and learning. I know that when I was first introduced to the apps and wanting, wanting to figure out what's, what's going on around me while, in my hikes and what I'm seeing while I'm hiking or what's growing in my backyard, I had tons of questions, but didn't necessarily have the tools to figure out what, what it was that I was seeing, what animals were visiting my flower garden, wildflowers I was seeing while I was out and hiking, what cool, you know, even sillier questions, like what cool bug that I saw buzzing by me while I was sitting on a park bench or, you know, even important questions about management on my own property, you know, trees being eaten by a certain insect and what sort of lines they were making on the leaves. You know, these are all questions that I had that I, I didn't always have the tools to figure out how to solve, how, how to solve those questions or figure out what the answers were. Well, I know that a lot of the volunteers that I work with too, when are, are often sometimes initially hesitant to, to take on a sort of plant ID centric program. When you're out and about for a hike and you look at a scene like you see in this picture here, you know, it's a, it's a dilemma. You're looking at a big field of green, you can't tell what's what, and it can feel overwhelming. Everything looks the same. Not everybody's carrying a guidebook with them when they're out on a hike. I know certainly when I'm out in my backyard, I'm not carrying a, a field guide with me all the time. And, it, and, it, and it's, Sometimes a lot of the guidebooks, you know, some are better than others, but some of them are hard to use. Say you're looking at a specimen of a plant or you're looking at a plant in one season, but the picture in the book is from another season. You know, there's a lot of obstacles to figuring out what's around you. And a lot of these things can be time consuming or feel overwhelming. You can't find the right pictures to match what you're seeing in front of you. Maybe the scientific lingo. Is, is tough to figure out in the book that you're reading or trying to figure it out. You're going on a, on a web search for this, the, this picture you took of this animal that you saw out on a hike and you can't find it. Well, these are all obstacles to figuring out what's around you and you know, learning about the biodiversity that we have in our, in our forests and trail systems. Well, help is on the way. And there is an app for that. I know that's a, a common phrase these days, but it's true. And the app that we're going to be focusing on today is called Seek by iNaturalist. Uh, you can recognize it by this logo here of the white leaf, white curly leaf, uh, with it usually surrounded by, by a green background. It's been described as a Pokemon Go or a Shazam for nature. So basically, you know, using your phone and this image recognition software to point your phone at something that you're looking at and in real time will let you know 
oftentimes what species and the exact type of organism that you're seeing. So getting that ID, and the reason why it's described as like a Pokemon Go, there are plenty of opportunities to play games and, and, and to capture these images. Of course, not capturing Pokemon, but capturing images of what you're seeing and learning about what you're seeing uh, on your hikes or out, out in the outdoors. Again, you want to explore and learn about what's around you. As to what it is, it was an app that was created by another app called iNaturalist, which, it, which we'll talk about later in later tutorials. But in, in essence, uh, iNaturalist itself is a large online science photo database, and, and it's a community of those that post pictures in nature, and they talk about what they see, and they create this, this large photo database of all these cool things that live in our, in, in our forest and, and streams and, and ecosystems around us. Now, Seek links together and was created by iNaturalist, so it basically uses live image recognition software to scan that huge, vast science photo database. Um, to figure out what it, what it is that, that you're seeing in front of you. The app itself was developed in partnership with the World Wildlife Fund and the Netflix series, Our Planet. I'm not sure if those of you who are tuned into this tutorial have seen that, but basically that series looks at biodiversity across the globe and some of the plants and animals that are facing a lot of crises in the world today uh, in terms of in terms of biodiversity and species survival. And SEEK is, is an effort by, by those organizations to basically catalog the biodiversity in our own local ecosystems and to figure out, figure out what we have here in terms of plants and animals and how to preserve uh, the, those things in nature that we all love seeing and, and, and interacting with. Um, in this section of the PowerPoint, which I'll make available online, you can actually click on that link and see Seek's own tutorial and see the power of the app and what it can be what can be done. But as part of this tutorial that I'm doing with you guys here today, I'll actually show you on my own phone and take you guys outside to see through my phone well, how the app works. So you can either use this tutorial here or you know, click on this watch in action link to see Seek's own tutorial to see the power of the app. But I'll take you through that in the next uh, parts and the next few sections here. As to why to use it, the, the app itself takes the guesswork out of IDing. It's an awesome supplement to field guides that might, you might have on hand and a, and a huge time saver. I know I often get questions, well, is this just gonna replace the common field guide and you know, people feeling frustrated with that? And I say, no, definitely not. It's just another tool to have in your toolbox that can supplement field guides. Field guides can be amazing in so many different ways in terms of technical information and knowledge. And the Seek app is just another avenue to explore. It'll help you build confidence about what you're seeing in front of you and, and is a very quick way of building knowledge of the local biodiversity around you. And honestly, it's so much fun to use. I know I'm a nature nerd, but I love using it out in the field. It leaves you wanting to learn more and keep exploring. And it, it, it's almost like as soon as you figure out one thing, you want to learn about something else and you commit you commit that one thing to memory, and now you don't even need to use the Seek app on it, so it makes you want to learn more about different things that you're seeing, different plants and animals, and, and gets you very, very curious about what you're seeing out while you're out exploring the trails or, or even your own backyard. So of course, the first step that you gotta take is to download the app. And this is available for free on your smartphone's app store. All you need to do is in your app search box in your app store is to type in Seek or Seek by iNaturalist. Look for this green logo with a white leaf in the middle. Uh, just start downloading that app and you should see a little circle that tells you about the, the download time. And once it's downloaded on your phone, you hit open and you might get a few prompts about turning on location services and accessing photos on your phone. So you should say yes to turning on location services and allow the app to access photos on your phone. I wanna say something about turning on those location services. The location services actually just helps with the ID. So what it does is it draws from that iNaturalist photo database from all of the pictures that have been posted in that area. So it actually includes, inc uh, improves the accuracy of what the app is telling you that you're seeing, but it doesn't actually 
track your position and, and specific location so that others on the interwebs can see where you are. Your privacy is maintained unless you decide to post directly to iNaturalist, which is an option for you. And I'll, I'll teach more about this in, in a later part section about how C can interface with iNaturalist to become a citizen scientist. So if that's something you're interested in exploring and doing, you can, uh, you can post to iNaturalist directly and there, there are ways to do that. But if you just use Seek, you, your privacy is maintained. You don't have to worry about it. So again, turn on your uh, location services and allow it to access photos on your phone. In terms of step two, uh, when the app loads up and you are ready to use it, you will be prompted with the following screen. If you already have an iNaturalist account, you can just choose to log in directly with iNaturalist where my arrow is here. But probably for many of you, this is your first go at Seek and iNaturalist. So choose that option to sign up for iNaturalist. This will allow you the opportunity later to take the things in your phone from Seek and the images that you're seeing and post to the, the larger iNaturalist database. It doesn't mean that you have to, it just gives you the option. So I would recommend signing up for iNaturalist right now to allow for that opportunity later, and it just also makes the setup process easier to just do that right now. Of course, you can continue without signing in if you want, but I do recommend signing up for iNaturalist as sort of a just a one-shot deal sort of thing. The next step, once you choose that option to sign up for iNaturalist, they'll ask you certain questions like this prompt that you see over here where my arrow is about your birthday. In order to have a Seek account, you must be at least 13 years old to create that account. That doesn't mean that kids can't use it. In fact, kids love this app and my, my own kids and family use this and really enjoy using it. You just need to enter in your birthday to have to be the main account uh, person and just the, it works on a Rolodex system. So just scroll down to whatever your, the month is, date and year, hit confirm. That'll then take you over here to sign up through email. And I know many of you may have different email accounts, but basically just choose an email address that you're, that you're used to using and just remember what email address that you've used. Once you enter that in, hit next and that will take you to this screen down here to basically create a username and a password and the only advice I would give here is whatever username and password you choose, please write it down on a piece of paper so that you can remember it. Because if you do go on to different steps in the tutorial and you do decide, hey, I wanna start posting some of the, some of the images I'm, I'm seeing with Seek to the iNaturalist database, um, you will need to remember what that username and password is. So please do uh, enter a username and password that you can remember and write down on a piece of paper for later use. Then all you need to do is hit sign up and you are good to go. The next step of course is having fun. Now it's time, you've got your Seek, you've got your Seek app ready and loaded, you're signed up through iNaturalist and now it's time to go out and explore. So the next series in this tutorial and in this training workshop is you, uh, I will take you outside and show you through my own phone how the app works and the power of the app. You'll see screenshots and different things that I'm doing with the phone so that you yourself can now go out and use it and how to capture images and learn about the local biodiversity around you and get excited to go out and explore. So that ends this first part. And of course, if you are interested, of course, let's, um, let's take the next part of this session and go outside and figure out what we're seeing outdoors and I'll show you how to use the Seek app through my own phone. Thanks and hope to talk to you again soon.